in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse number 24, do you not know that those who run in the race all run, but one received the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it or that you may win. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline. Somebody say discipline. I discipline my body. I bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. So I'm teaching from the sixth area of your life that must be, that must be disciplined. And right now we're talking about discipline in your friendship. We found out that discipline is forced obedience until a habit is formed. See, family, you are your habits. Are you with me? Whatever your habits are, discipline is forced obedience until a habit is formed. Now, we're talking about discipline for us is concerning to friendship. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. So discipline is forced obedience until a habit is formed. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. It said, Don't, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts what? Good character. So we're talking about discipline and friendship. We're going to talk about that because your friends are taking you somewhere. Amen. See, God is serious about friendship. See, that's why he said don't, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse 14, he said don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The people that you hang out with the most, they're going to influence you. They're going to rub off on you. I guarantee you right now, if you've been coming to this church a year, you sound just like Pastor Terry in some area. <laughs> I bet you someplace you go, you said the devil is a light. Watch this here, family. I ain't gonna they in the service today. I, I'm not gonna point them out. I had a, a, a mother in here told me she had to say something to her daughter, and her daughter got mad. Talking about, don't be talking like Pastor Terry to me. And, I'm not even in the house. What? What they doing? They quoting the scripture. See, see, Carl, you've been hanging out with me. You gonna sound? If I hang out with you, I'm gonna sound just like you. See, you gonna become who you around. God know this. That's why he said, don't you be deceived. Evil communication corrupts good character. Now, last week I started laying the foundation on this here. And I want to continue to lay the foundation because, family, I want for you to see things the way God sees things. See, that's what God told us. He said, you're born again. Your spirit is good. Now I have to renew your mind to the things of God. Don't be conformed. Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't think like the world thinks. Most Christians in the church still thinking like the world thinks. That's why they're not seeing supernatural results. Your God is supernatural. You are supernatural. There's a supernatural... Com I feel this thing today, boy. There's a supernatural component that's in you. You're not tapping into. Why? Because your mind is blocking you. That's why he said, don't be conformed to this world. Don't think like the world thinks, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the, the good, the acceptable, but most of all, what is the perfect will of God for your life. God wants for you to see friendship like he sees friendship. Because we'll meet somebody, and third day later to my pastor, I want you to meet my friend. And then don't let her, don't let her later get over 30. She'll come home with anybody to my mama, meet my friend. Baby, that ain't your friend. You just met them at the club two weeks ago. You don't know them. So we got to understand friend. We got to see friendship. Friendship is a covenant term. See, family, look at me. Your God is a covenant God. You in covenant with God by the blood of Jesus. This book is a covenant book. See, this book ain't no ordinary book. Pull this book out in the hotel, motel. Pull this book out on the plane. Pull this book out in the club and see when they stop the music. <laughs> this book is supernatural. This book is coded. That's why I said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the natural man don't understand this. You can read it, but you won't get understanding. 
See, you can read it. That's why he said wisdom is the prince thing, therefore get wisdom, but all you're getting, get understanding. You can only, you can only benefit from something that you have understanding about. That's why he said the natural man don't understand the things of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he understand them because they are spiritually discerned. You got to understand you are, you are covenant people. See, you're different. You're the church. The church is supernatural, baby. When you got born again, something supernatural happened to you. You know you, you're born again. Because at one time somebody looked at you crazy, you'll go off on them. And then the church, somebody do something to you, you know you're born again because you said, Lord, I had to cuss her out, her stockings, her shoe. Now I'm praying for her. You, hey, baby, you know you, if you, let me tell you something, if that ain't changed about you, you ain't born again. Because that's why when Nicodemus met Jesus, he said, hold on, partner. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at your name and say, hold on. hold on. He said, hey, he said, he said, can't no man do this except God be with him? See, church, we're the church. We're supposed to be doing things. People say, can't nobody do this unless the Lord is with him. Right. Nicodemus said, how can I do that? Jesus said, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, what you want me to do, get back in my mother's belly? Jesus said, no, partner, you got to be born of the spirit and of the word. See, we're supernatural. See, when your man of God teaches you, I'm teaching the supernatural people. This ain't kind of church you're going to come and run up and flip and all that and walk out of here and can't do nothing. I'm going to challenge you because we're made for miracles, we're made for signs, and we're made for wonders. See, and when things things supposed to happen in your life, when people are supposed to come up to you and say, how do you get this promotion? How do you get this house? How do you get this man? I remember one time I was teaching in New York City, guy going to ask, gonna, gonna ask my wife, about, how did Pastor Terry get you? You better ask somebody, partner. <laughs> I'm a king. <laughs> Amen. How I tell me, how he end up with you? No, no word like I don't deserve her. You better ask somebody. You come in to hear me teach. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me get back in the spirit. Family, you are supernatural. See, see, supernatural things supposed to be happening up. But you got to see things the way God sees things. Remember we read Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 last week. He said, keep your mind staying on things that are Above, not on things that are on the earth. See, some hap I know something happened to me in October of 1993. I don't know about you. Did anything happen to anybody else in here? A lot of folks ain't born again. When you get born again and God come live in you by the way of Holy Spirit, things are supposed to change in your life. You're supposed to start seeing things different. You're supposed to think different. And when you think different, you're going to speak different. You're going to act different, and different things are going to happen for you. Nicodemus said, can't no man do this except, except God be with him? See, I'm preaching to the supernatural. So I want for us to see things the way God sees things. I want for you to look at friendship. Friendship is a covenant term. See, remember, we, we, we sing that song earlier. Every time I hear it, I think covenant. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. See, y'all seeing that you're thinking a friend who's somebody you just met, you've been hanging out with for the last two or three years. No, that's covenant. See, when we look at the scripture, see, I want for you to have God's mindset on it. See, when you look at the scripture, where we going, Holy Spirit? Go to James chapter number two. I'm already preaching. Tell your neighbor, you better catch up. Amen. Amen. That was introduction. Come on, James chapter number two. See, when you think friend, you got to see everything the way God sees things now. See, quit calling everybody your friend because you just met him on the job three weeks ago. Friendship is a covenant term. See, we say, we see things from, from God's perspective. God looks at friendship as a covenant term. In the East, covenant is called the strong agreement. In the East, covenant is called the agreement of strong friendship. See, the agreement of strong friendship. When we look at James chapter number 2, let's look at verse number 23. If you're there, say amen. amen. Y'all okay? Yeah. Amen. Y'all ready? Yeah. 
He said, watch this, and the scripture was fulfilled. We said, Abraham did what family? Abraham. Believed who? God. Now remember that all Abraham did was what? God. All God wants you to do is what? Believe. That's all God wants for you to do. All God wants you to do is believe him. And because he believed God, let's read the B part. Because he believed God and it was accounted or accredited to him, watch this here, for righteousness and he was called the what? See, that's the covenant term. When you believe God, God called you a friend. See, your man of God taught on covenant. And what did I tell you about covenant? See, when I told you about covenant, come here, Bruce. Come here one second. Come here. Say that with me. Me and Bruce, if I call Bruce my friend, we in covenant together. Whatever he has belongs to me. Whatever I have belongs to him. His enemies are my enemies. My enemies are his enemy. Whatever he got in his bank account, I come to him. I don't say, uh, how much you got in the account? Give me the checkbook. That's friendship. That's a covenant term. Like my wife, marriage is a covenant term. Whatever's in the account, she have access to it. See, see, whatever he has, I got. And whatever I got, he got. See, that's how God said. God said, the Bible said, because Abraham believed, he was called the friend of God. Thank you, man of God. That's how you got to look at friendship. Because God knows who you hang out with. It's going to affect you. The Bible says he believed God. That's all God. Let me tell you something, family. See, when God, when God promised you something, he knows you can't pay for it. He ain't asking you to pay for it. He's asking you to believe for it. Hallelujah. See, a lot of us keep trying to pay for stuff God can promise us. Baby, God already know what you got in the account. $5.71. See, he ain't asking you to pay for it. He already, is, he already know it's too hard for you, but it ain't too hard for him. He asking you to believe for it. See, and that's why, that's all Abraham did. He believed God, and he was called a friend of God. See, see I think covenant. And because I think covenant, I know whatever he promised me, it's going to come to pass. I don't care what it looked like. Why? Because watch this, family. Go to Romans chapter number 8. Now, Romans 10, Romans 10, Romans chapter number 10. Watch this here. You got to start thinking, we're the church. You got to start thinking covenant. We have a new covenant built on better promises. Amen. We got a, watch this here, we got a better covenant than Abraham. Jesus said, Abraham and all of them long to see the day that I'm living in now. See, Abraham them didn't have the Spirit of God living in them. We got the Spirit of God with us and in us. We got a better covenant built on better promises. That's why the Bible said, you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed. That is seed go again. And heirs according to the promise. See, you got to understand, when I see friendship, I'm in covenant with you. The Bible said there's a friend that stick closer than a brother. That's covenant. See, he said, he's, in other words, what he's saying is, I'm more closer to people who are born again. I'm going to show you that today than I am people in my own family who's not born again. Because they don't understand me. I've been born again. Whoever's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have, behold, all things have become a fresh start. A new beginning. Watch this in Romans chapter number what? Romans chapter number 10. Watch this here, family. All Abraham did was believe God. Watch this here. In Romans chapter number 10, look at verse number 11. There it go again. For the scripture says, what says? The scripture. The scripture says, whoever, somebody give me a definition of whoever, whoever believes on him would not be put, let me tell you something, family. Your man of God, if you believe on God, you will never be put to shame. Why? I got a covenant, I got a covenant pot that you can't see bigger than anything that you can't see. He said, if you believe, you will never be put to shame. If it look like I'm losing, it's delusion. You in delusion. Why? Because my covenant partner, I know it's a covenant book that told me in Romans 8, 28, for all, this going to work together for my good. 
Because I love God. Because I love God, I'm his covenant. Now, you got to understand when he said friendship. The Bible said Abraham. Okay, okay, here it go. See, a lot of times we call people friend. I'm your friend as long as I do what you tell me to do. But what happened when I tell you to do what I tell you to do? Did that come out right? See, a lot of times people are with you because of what you can do. What happened when they require something of you? See, I'm a friend. That's a covenant term. Abraham had to do whatever God told him to do. Okay, Genesis 22, come on. Kim, you don't want somebody going to preach with me. The rest of them, I'm just going. <laughs> Genesis chapter what? See, oh, we're going we gonna, we gonna to go to Genesis chapter 22 next. We'll go to Genesis 18. We're going to come right back to that. See, you got to see, I want for you to see covenant the way God sees covenant. Or friendship the way God sees friendship. In Genesis chapter 18, if you look at verse number, we're going to start at verse 17. I'm in Genesis 18, 17. Then we're going to go to Genesis 22. Now, that baby going to preach with me. Then me and Kim and that baby, we're going to turn this house out. Y'all ready? Verse 17. I'm in Genesis 18, 17. And the Lord said, who said? The Lord. Should I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall what? Surely. He shall, he shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his households after him that, I'm, that, that they may keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. God said Abraham going to do what he's supposed to do. He said that's why I ain't going to hide nothing from him. Y'all remember, write it down, Psalm 25, 14. The Bible said the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him. If you fear God, fear God means have reverence for him. If you reverence God and honor him, he's going to share secrets with you. Pastor, God ain't speaking to me. You might not be reverencing him. You might be in disobedience. You might, let me tell you something, family. When God tells you to do something and you don't do it, God don't give you another instruction until you do that instruction. See, God don't buy you toys for Christmas and you've been bad all year. Amen. He a good parent. He's a good father. So the Bible said, he said, for I have known him in order that he may command his children and his households after him that they may keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken. Let me tell you something. If God has spoken something to you, he's looking for you to obey him. Somebody say obey. But now watch this here, family. See, we see seeing why God called Abraham, God called Abraham friend, because he obeyed God. See, he believed God. Genesis 22, it lets you know. See, Genesis 22, let's go there. Genesis chapter number 22. Amen. This is the story when Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac. See, God going to ask you to, look at me, family, he going to ask you to put some on the altar. See, it's one thing, it's a lot of time when things are going good, we'll say the right thing. When things are, when all hell breaks loose in our life, that's, that's the acid test right there. That's when the rubber meets the road. Let's see what you're going to do then. See, my wife and I, sometimes we have disagreements. Now, because we have disagreement and we have heated fellowship. Y'all know what I mean by heated fellowship. Amen. Pray the Lord. That's when she started calling me stuff that's not in the Bible. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> but watch this here, family. Watch, but watch this here, family. We don't talk about divorce. No, we, we in company with each other. We know this is forever. We don't talk about divorce. We just have a disagreement. You know. That I said, God, you know, she thinks she's right. I think I'm right. I said, God, pray and let her know that I'm right. <laughs> pray the Lord. You got to be a fool to be arguing with somebody, and you, you, you know you're wrong. So I said, God, you know, you know she's wrong. I'm going to pray that she, she come around and see that she's wrong. She don't even have, even have to apologize. But watch this here, family. See, see, that's how God, God said, I know Abraham going to do the right thing. Let me, I'm, he's talking to you now. 
do he know you're going to do the right thing? Amen. See, that's why I told you, family, this is personal. Do he know you're going to do the right thing at 2 o'clock in the morning when ain't nobody looking but you and him? Right. See, it's, do he know you're going to do... Well, watch this here, family. God has spoken something over your life. He said, I can't bring it to pass unless you do the right thing. That's why the Bible said, give the devil no place. He said, I know Abraham going to command his household, his servant, and his children after the word of the Lord. What about you? That's why the Bible, we just read it in James chapter 2, verse 23. He said, I'm proud to call Abraham friend. Is God proud to call you friend? That's a covenant term. See, see, that's why he said, and those that believe on him would never be put to shame. I'll never be put to shame. I don't care what it looked like. Because I have read the end of the book, and the end of the book said, I win. Amen. So when we get in Genesis chapter 22, this is when God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. And Abraham took his boy. See, come here, Rodney. Come here, Rodney. Quickly. <laughs> Abraham took his, we did this before. You already know I use you. Lay down. See, er, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Pray the Lord. <laughs> See, this is, everybody said, this is Isaac. This is Isaac. Now, he said, I want you to take your son, your only son. Abraham had another son, which was Ishmael. But that son came from the flesh. That didn't come from God. It's something in the flesh. You're trying to ask God to bless. He said, I ain't going to never bless come on it. Now. Come on now. Because it's from the flesh. I'm only going to bless what I tell you to do. So God tells Abraham to take you. You can read it when you get home. He said, you can take your only son, and I want you to take him to the place, and I want for him, you to sacrifice him there. So the Bible said three days later, Abraham saw the place from afar, told his servant, you stay here. Me and the lad is going to worship God. That's what I tell you, family, our sacrifice is a worship. When you give your tithes and offers, you are worshiping God. You don't see it that way. You see it as, as being stressed out. Baby, that's why we say up here, we worshiping God. It's a sacrifice. God get ready to ask him to chop his boy up, and he said, we're going to worship. That, and, and we was here, that, that ain't no worship. <laughs> Anytime God asks you to do something, he asking you to do what? Worship him. See, you got to think like God thinks. God tell you to get $100. Some of y'all say, the devil is a lie, rebuke you, Satan. $100? Why, anytime God tell you to give something, he has a harvest for you. And he know the harvest is tied to that seed. And when you don't do what he tell you to do, he can't get to you what he promised you. So Abraham and Isaac, they go to this place. Somebody give me a knife. So Abraham, <laughs> so hey, hey family, this is real. Everybody say example. example. You better? <laughs> amen, amen. Praise the Lord. This is real. They're going up the mountain. Isaac said, Father, I see the wood in the fire. Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, the Lord will provide. Let me tell you some family. Watch this here, Reggie. When you're a friend of God, God going to provide for you. Yes, he is. But you, you understand what I'm saying? He going to provide for you. I told you, me and my family going to have chicken wings. Ain't nobody else eating in this country. I'm a friend of God. If you're a friend of God, he said, the Lord will provide and kept right on walking. And then went right up there and tied that boy up. He wasn't no baby now. Isaac had to be, most theologians say he between the age of 13 and 17, the age of Rodney. He tied him up, covered his mouth up. You need to see, this is real. This Bible is real. The Bible says the word of God is alive. The word of God is powerful. See, he said the nuggets, the secrets are in the story. Tied him up. Bruce, what you doing with a knife? <laughs> Most people got a gun today, they don't. But watch this here, family. Tied him up and took that boy, his only son, the one that he loved, and took that knife 
And then all of a sudden the Bible says, cover your eyes, Rodney. And the Bible said, when he took it up there, the angel said, Abraham, Abraham, steal your hand. Family, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, family. You don't know what you're going to do in this time. A lot of us talk that old talk. See, you're going to know when the fire comes, the fire going to reveal what you made of. See, Abraham took that knife and it took an angel to call. See, a lot of people say, I love you, God. Okay, we're going to see when the fire comes. Because the real fire going to reveal what you made of. See, took that knife and cut his boy up. See, that's why I said, God, that's why I, I, I was watching the movie, The Bible Story. Don't go to sleep on me, Rodney. You can take your hand down. It's okay. Watch this, family. I was watching the Bob, Bible movie, movie, and the nuggets are in the story. So Abraham is out there, right? And God is talking to him. So Abraham in the movie said, have not done enough to prove you my faithfulness? Because God had just told him to sacrifice Isaac. He said, have not done enough? How many times we didn't say it to ourselves? Have not done a, enough? God said, you got one more thing to do. One more thing to do. Somebody say one more thing. One more thing to do. See, because I tell, I tell God, hold on, haven't I done enough? He said, Terry, one more thing. He said, when you do this one, a lot of y'all, I'm talking to you now. God said, when you do, when some of y'all just a telephone call, just ask somebody to forgive you. Some of you, you everybody here know what that one more thing is. When you do that one more thing, you're going to get your breakthrough. He ain't talking about two. How many? Everybody get a one up. One more thing, one more thing. Watch this here. All of a sudden, the Bible says, when God said, Abraham, Abraham, the angel said, steal your hand. See? Come on, Rodney, you can get up. Now watch this here, family. Watch this here. You can get up. Now, come on, let's go to the scripture. Watch this here, family. Let's pick it up in verse 14. If you're there, say amen. amen. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said this day, in the mouth of the Lord, it should be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham, at what time? First time he called to Abraham. Don't hurt the boy. Don't hurt the boy. Now he called to him, at what time? A second time. Watch this here, family. A second time out of heaven. and said, by myself I have sworn, Abraham. But God talking to you. He's talking to me said the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessings, I will bless you. Multiplying, I'm going to do what, family? Multiply you. Watch this here. Your descendants at the start of it, whatever God promised you, God didn't give your man of God a promise. See, he didn't give whatever God promised you. He said when you do this one thing, all blessing, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to multiply you as the stars of the heaven and the sands which is of the seashore, and your descendants should possess the gates of their enemies. Verse 18, in your seed, everything is in the seed. He told, uh, 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 what's her name? Eve. He said, Eve, your seed, the devil going to bruise his head, but he going to bruise his head. The power was in the, the seed. And the seed we find out in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, is the word of God. He said, watch this here, family. In your seed, all the nations of the earth should be called blessed. Come on, family, look at this. Because you have obeyed my voice. See, that's what God taught him Because you obey. That's why he called him friend. That's why he said, when you teach on friendship, let the people know, I don't see friends the way they see friends. See, friendship, that's a strong agreement. When I call you friend, what I got, you can have it. And I ain't got no friend going to take advantage of me. Right. See, we got some friends that take advantage of you, not a real friend. Right. You think God will take advantage of you? See, real friends won't take advantage of you. Not a, re a real friend want to see you win. A real friend ain't going to have jealousy and envy. Right. See, he said, because you obeyed my voice. He said, and you'll see all the nations earth be blessed because you obeyed my voice. Look at verse uh, 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 17 again. 16 and 17, by myself I have sworn. Family, when you do what, when God calls you a true friend, see, a lot of us, we're born again. We're going to go to John chapter 13 in a few minutes. Jesus said, I call you friend. When he called, he said, I call you friend because I let you in on what my father told me. Real friends, they share secrets. Because they know if I give you a secret, you ain't going to tell nobody. If you tell somebody, you're not my friend. 
Amen. Pray the Lord. So he said, by myself I have sworn, said the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessings, I will bless you. And multiply, I will multiply you. Family, when God calls you friend, when you do what he tells you to do, he going to bless you, he going to multiply you, you ain't going to have room enough to put stuff. See, it's one thing, when God calls you friend, that's huge. See, but I want for you to see friend. That's why when I see that song, every time it come up and I see that song, I am a friend of God, I think covenant. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. See, when every time that song comes, I said, Lord, it's their covenant up in me. I said, and he said, Terry, because you believe in me, all Abraham did was what? He, watch this here, family. Abraham believed that God was going to raise this boy back up if he killed him. How you know that, Pastor? Go to Hebrews chapter number 11 with your smart self. <laughs> with your good question action self. See, the scripture tell you. I'm telling you, sometimes God will tell you, say, give that person your best suit. In your, and you, you stand to argue with God. The devil is alive. Baby, God trying to get you 50 suits. Because God know, God know that one thing, that covetous is stopping you from all, all blessing breaking loose in your life. See, that one thing, family, that, how many things? One. That one thing. See, you know why? You know why God wants you to do that one thing? Because God don't want for it to be an idol in your life. It's something we said we won't even give God. See, anything you put before God is an idol. Your marriage, your children, your money, your job, your health. Anything you put before God is an idol. And he said, I'm a jealous God. I'm going to come against anything you put before me. He said, you ain't going to put nobody before me. And a lot of us say, I would never put anybody before God. And then all God asks us to do something, that's the test. What have God told you to do? See, God tell you, said, leave this church. Everybody said, he ain't talking about first out in the beginning. <laughs> you in a church where you know the word of God is not going forth. God tell you to leave the church. You said, God, I can't leave. My family going to talk about me. My mom is here. My dad is in here. My brothers and sisters, my nephews, my nieces, all my friends. He said, what you say, God? Leave the church. Because God know if he's trying to get you out of there so you can bring them out of there to deliver them. And you, because you won't go because you're afraid how they're going to talk about you. Amen. See, Pastor, my family, my family laid the first cornerstone in this church. Baby, oh, my family, my mama made the first sweet potato pie for the, the first pastor here. Baby, God don't care nothing about that. Let me tell you something thing God care about. You doing what he tell you doing what he tell you to do. That's all God care about. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Only thing God care about, he all, when he asks you to do something, he already know how you feel about it. He ain't asked you how you feel. He's just telling you to do what I tell you to do. That sounds like some of us parents, don't Because your kids tell me that. Why? Why? Let me tell you something, boy. I, I, I don't tell you nothing. You... Why? 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 No. See, God, he already know how you feel. And remember, everything God tell you to do, he have your best interest in mind. See? God, the Bible says he brings you out to bring you in. He can't bring you in because you won't come out. Amen. And we stay there. And because of the church, we think God is in there. It's some churches God ain't in. Because he didn't send the pastor. The pastor went. Come on now. Amen. Somebody said, preach, Pastor Terry. Preach, Pastor Terry. <laughs> See, family? Where I tell you turn? Watch this here. Abraham. Watch this here. Abraham and Isaac. Look at here, family. Look at, uh, 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 let's see we're going to start at. <laughs> Look at verse 17. I'm in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Streaming live. Y'all okay with me? Okay, if not, I'm okay with you. Y'all ready? Look at verse 17. By faith. How he do it, family? Everything God going to have you do is going to be by faith. It's not going to be by sense. It ain't going to make sense. See, the church keep trying to make sense of God, Steve. Steve, he ain't going to make sense. It's going to make what? Faith. 
God, see, see, we're trying to reason with God with our, how we see, what we think, what we hear, what we, Bruce, my bow tie, this one is messed up, man. Don't worry about it. It's, going, it's a little crooked. Yes, sir. But the words coming out of me is not crooked. Don't worry about the bow tie. <laughs> he worried about my presentation. Don't worry. That's my man. Now, watch this here, family. Watch this here, family. See, when God tells you to do something, it don't make sense. See, we keep trying to mama to reason with God. See, with our five senses. It don't make reason. It don't make sense. It make, faith. it make faith. What is faith? Faith is a subject of things hoped for, the evidence of things. Now, see, faith is acting on the word of God. It ain't going to make sense. See, when a God takes, God ain't in the sense realm. God, the devil is the God of the sense realm. God is in the faith realm, in the unseen realm. So the Bible says Abraham did this by not only did he did it, do it by faith, he did it by relationship. Because God had did some other thing. God had promised him Isaac when him and sister Sarah and his body was good as dead. So he said God is able to bring him. God is able to raise him up again. Look at verse 17. Watch this here, family. He said, watch this here, watch this here. By faith. Somebody said by faith. Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who has received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said in Isaac, your seed should be called. Concluding, in other words, the end of the matter, that God was what, family? Able to raise him up even from the what? Dead from which he also received him in a figurative sense. Abraham saw God, saw Isaac. Literally, one straight trying to say dead. But watch this here, family. That's why the Bible said Abraham is called a friend of God. See, he said, if I, God promised me this boy, God didn't promise you something. See, let me show you what, what God will do. Come here, Bruce. Let me have that iPad. That's a good iPad. Let me, yeah, that's you, dear. Yes, let me show you how God operates, family. God will give you something. And you rejoice over it. Rejoice over that, Bruce. You rejoice over it. That's how, let me show you how God works. And then God said, give it back here. I have a problem. See, God will tell you to give it back. He, see how easy he did? He don't, most people don't do that. They struggle. He'll give it to you and let you enjoy it while I said, now give it back to me. See, see how they struggle? And then finally, if you're a friend of God, because if you want to pass the test, you'll give it to God. Now you pass the test. Somebody tell what God's going to do. He's going to give it back to you. Family, that was good. I just did. <laughs> See, but what most people going to do, family? They ain't going to give it back. They ain't going to give it back, Zach. They're going to hold on to it. See, God said, if you give it to me, now give it back. He's going to let you enjoy it. I have been through this before. <laughs> Amen. And God said, give it back to me. He said, whatever you give to me, and let me say, friend, when he give it back to you, it's going to be better than what it was before. Y'all hear what I just said? When he give it back, know what? If I, when I get him this iPad back, it ain't going to never work. It's going to be better than it was before. See, are y'all with me? It's going to be better. Thank you. That's how God works. But most people, they ain't going to give it back to God. Now, God said it just became what, Leonard? An idol. Became an idol now, Mom. Now he's saying, that's it. I can't do nothing else for you because you didn't, if I give you something else, you're going to stack stuff up on top of me. See, that's, how, that's why he said Abraham was called a friend because that scripture I just read right there, he believed God. Let me tell you something, family. Are you really a friend of God? If you really a friend of God, you'll believe him and you'll do what he tells you to do. And he ain't asking you to do hard stuff. He's just asking you to forgive people. He asking you to come to church. He asking you to walk in love. He, see, he's, he, asking you, he ain't asking you to do hard things. What my Bible? Oh, my Bible right here. Watch this. He ain't asking you to do hard things. Go to first, where we going, family? Holy Spirit, go to first John chapter number five. First John chapter number five. All the way in the back of the book. Hebrews, James. Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, chapter number 5. Watch this. He ain't asking you the hard thing. 
But what he asks you to do, anytime God asks you to do something, it's supernatural. It might not be spectacular, but it is supernatural. See, it is. See, God, he asks you, see, because he's supernatural. So if he asks you to do something, this Bible is super. When you got born again, you are now super. Act like you're supernatural then. Talk like you're supernatural. Quit talking natural. What's natural? Pastor, I don't know how we're going to make it. What's natural? I can never live in a neighborhood like this here. What's natural? I can never get this promotion. What's natural? I can never get my, that's natural, baby. Supernatural said, bring it on, devil. I can do all things through Christ who supernatural is greater is that is in the heat is in the world. See, supernatural is my God shall supply all my needs according to supernatural is God will never leave me nor forsake me. So I may boldly say the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear. What can man do unto me? Supernatural is giving God his word back. Remember, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of his. The word of God is supernatural. When you get home, read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. He said, you ain't born again of corruptible seed. You're born again of incorruptible seed, imperishable seed, by the word of the living and doing by the living word of God, baby. You're supernatural. So talk supernatural. Act supernatural. Think supernatural. And guess what's going to show up in your life? The supernatural. You know what's going to show up in your life? A Nicodemus. A Nicodemus going to show up in your life and say, can't no woman do this unless God be with him? And then that's when you turn them on to who? Jesus. Because they come in to get what you got. But Jesus said, you must be born again. Nicodemus don't want to be born again. Nicodemus want to do the miracles that Jesus is doing. Jesus said, partner, you can't do this unless you do this. Amen. Why well, I tell you, turn. 1 John chapter 5, look at verse number 1. We start at verse 1. Whoever believed that Jesus, whoever what? This book is written to who? Believers. Whoever heard of a believer that don't believe? Watch this here. Whoever believed that Jesus the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loved him, who begotten also loved him, is begotten of him. But this we know. But this we what? That we love the children of God. But this we know, that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Verse 3, I want to get to. And this is the love of God, that we keep his commandment, and his commandments are not Burning. burdensome. They're not hard. You know, you know the problem, family? You know the problem? We ain't made the commitment yet. We ain't made the commitment yet. Is God lying? No. He said they're not burdensome. They're not hard. They're, one translation says not, they're not grievous. See, he said, we ain't made the commitment. See, remember the story I told you about the, about the chicken in the, in the hall, the pig? They said, hey, let us, let's offer some to the banquet. The pig said, that ain't fair. The chicken said, what you mean that ain't fair? He said, the, the pig said, all you're going to do is give some eggs. I got to give my body. I got to give my life. Family, guess what God is asking you to do? To give your life. Most of us ain't did this. That's why the commandments of God, the word of God is grievous, it's burdensome. A lot of us, and all you got to do is make one choice. Say, God, I'm going to live for you from this day forward. That's what Abraham did. And the Bible said he was called the friend of God. So when I teach on friendship, when I get on and start teaching about it next week, I want from you to think from God's perspective, not a, a Western civilization mindset. A United States mindset, a Canada. No, I want you to think an Eastern mindset. I want you to think like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob them thought. I want you to think like God thinks. He said, let the same mind in Christ Jesus be also in you. Are y'all with me? Watch this here, family. Go to John chapter 13. John chapter number 13. Because the terror teach this. Remember, remember what my, um, my objective was? My objective was that you look at your friends and make the necessary godly adjustment before and during 2015, which is the year of restoration. Everybody for the year, see, 
it, when, you get to, when you get to John chapter 13, look at me. When you get to John chapter number 13, look at me. Are y'all there? John chapter 13. You see my Bibles right here? All of, every last one of my Bibles are friends. Somebody say friends. Before and during 2015, I want you to look at your friends to see whether or not they need to go over in 2015 with you. So if they look at you, tell me, why are you looking at me funny? Babe, I'm seeing whether or not you're going to go over with me. Amen. Most of us, we don't look at our friends. We don't know. I'm going to show you how your friends are affecting you, either good or bad. You should be looking at, you should always be looking at your relationships. Because relationships, some relationships are like scaffolds. Like scaffolding, you see, when you go to a building, sometimes it seems like they have scaffolding up for a long time. But when they finish remodeling the building, what do they do with the scaffolding? They take it down. Some of us, some friends are temporary. Some friends are, are just, some, some friends are forever. But some of us, we got friends with us, the building been put up, the scaffolding still, we need to let them go. And you don't know why you're agitated with them. You're agitated because they're supposed to go. See, the worst thing you do is have a beautiful building and have the scaffolding. You can't see the building. Some of y'all, I can't. Some, oh, this is good, this is good, this is good. All the single ladies wave at me. All the single ladies wave. Some, hey, hey, God can't get you your husband because your friend, the scaffolding's in the way. Get that, help. I mean, get that, get her out the way. He obey to see you. See, let me tell you something. Got a beautiful building, but the scaffolding is up. Let me tell you something, family. Some friends, some people you're going to meet is just for a day. Some people you're going to meet is for 90 days, six months, a year. Some people you meet is going to be for five years. And some people you meet there forever. You, it's your job to discern, are you a day? Are you 90 days? Are you six months or a year forever? Some of them folks you meet because you're looking for a husband. You just want to meet them for a date. If you give them 90 days, you know, you know whether or not, hey, you want to go on for six months. See, we still hanging out with people we should have got rid of a long time ago. See? See? But we don't have the strength to do it. But they're going to stop you from getting to your wealthy place. See? Watch this here, family. Watch this here. And John chapter number what? 13. See, friendship is like scaffolding. Some people need to go. They blocking you. They're in the way. They stopping you from shining. I live this here. See, the Bible says a man gifts makes room for him and bring him for great men. You got some friend around you. As soon as they see somebody liking you, they sabotage the relationship. You got one time to do that with me. Amen. You got one time to do that with me. See? And then they ask you, what's wrong with you? You. <laughs> You'll never do that again. Well, come on, family. A lot of stuff I learned before I got born again. First time, shame on you. The second time, now it's my problem. I wasn't even born again learn that. I got that straight out of the hood. Class one-on-one. Amen. If you do it again, it's my fault. Now watch this here, family, see if we're looking at friends. In John chapter number 13, are we in John 13? Yes. <laughs> Let's see where I want to go. John, <laughs> John chapter number, watch this here, family. I want you to see this here. <laughs> John chapter number 15, I'm sorry, John 15, 13. John 15, 13. Y'all ready? Look what he said, John 13. He said, greater. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his. Now, do you, think about I don't want nobody to answer this here. Do you have a friend you'll lay your life down for? See, remember he's talking covenant, right? Remember friendship, we're going to read, friendship is a covenant term. He said, you ought to be able to lay down your life for your, your friend. Let me tell you some family. It's some people who've been together so long, when, one, when they turn 80 and 90 years old, one partner died, within six months, the other partner died. You hear me? 
Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't ready to die right now, don't, so don't you die, don't you? Let me see. see, but they have been together so long. See, my wife and I, we've been together so long, she knows when something's wrong with me, she knows what I like, when I don't like. When I know when something's wrong with her, I ask the baby, what's wrong? What's the first question? Nothing. <laughs> then two minutes later, brrrr. <laughs> you know how folks ask you, said, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Then all of a sudden, five minutes later, hold on, let me tell you. <laughs> See, real friends are willing to do what? So how can you call somebody your friend you just met six months ago, three months ago, you wouldn't lay your life down for them? Your, your kids come home. Mama, daddy, meet my friend. <laughs> I don't think so. See? Because you think in covenant. See, watch, marriage is covenant. Watch this here. He's saying, greater love has no one this than lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends. You are my friends, Abraham, Tarek, Isaac, Jacob. If you do Whatever I want, family. Amen. Is that simple? Yeah. He, said, he said, quit singing a song. If you ain't doing what I tell you, you ain't my friend. Unless you do what I tell you to do. Amen. Look at verse 15. No longer do I call you servant, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things I have heard from my father, I have made what, family? Remember he told Abraham, he said, now I know you love me. You want to get there. Let me tell you something. Close your Bible. We're done for the week. Watch this here, family. Well, we're done to Tuesday. Watch this here, family, because some people don't even show Bible study. You said we're done for the week. No, come to Bible study on Tuesday. Listen to me, family. Look at me. He said, you're friends if you do whatever I tell you to do. Now, I want you to take this home with you. When you do what God tells you to do, he's going to call you friend. And God's going to bless you beyond your imagination. Because now God is your friend. Think about that. I know, somebody say, I know. I know, I know whatever Linda got, she ain't never, Linda ain't never kept nothing back from me. Never. When I say never, she don't have no account with no $15,000 in time I, I give you $100. If she got a $15,000 account, I got $15,000. She know it's the same with me. Don't you know what God got have in his account versus what's in your account? And you fighting to hold on to your account? You know why? Because you don't understand what friends are, what the, the definition of friend. Family, when you do what he tell you to do, he going to call you friend. And that scripture said, we just read it in Romans chapter 10, we said, anybody that believe in me will never be put to shame. Give the Lord a hand, pray. Mm -hmm. Hello, family. I'm Pastor Terry Stobbs of Fresh God New Beginning Christian Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to Streaming Live. We're here every week at 10 a.m. Spread the word to your family and your friends. Now, family, listen to me. I just don't teach the word just to be teaching. I want for you to win in life. We serve a God that is alive and powerful and sharper than the two-edged sword. I'm going to tell you something that God shared with me many years ago I never forget. It comes from Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man he should repent. If God said it, he'll do it. If God promised it, he'll bring it to pass. Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Now, I need your help. I want for you to sow into the ministry. I want for you to go to our website, which is fsnbcc.org, and click on to the donate button. Just click the button, or there's an address right below on the screen. So into the ministry. Fresh start, new beginning is good ground. Now, I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Whoever's in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become a fresh start, a new beginning. Have a great week. See you next week, same time.